530. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, school board meeting for Thursday, June 6th, our regular meeting. If we could do roll call, please. Mr. Browning. Here. Mr. Steininger. Here. Ms. Landon. Here. Mrs. Malad. Here. Mrs. Webb. Here. Next, could we stand please for the Pledge of Allegiance? The flag is in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is to approve the agenda as presented. If I could get a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Mr. Pilot. Mrs. Webb. Yes. Mr. Steininger. Yay. Ms. Landon. Yes. Ms. Malad. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next is to approve the minutes of the Thursday, May 2nd regular meeting. Again, if we could get a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Mr. Pilot. Mrs. Malad. Yes. Mr. Steininger. Yay. Ms. Landon. Yes. Mrs. Webb. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next is board report and goodie order. We could start with Stephanie. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, not tonight. Okay. Pass. Wendy? Um, I just want to um, say how thankful I was to be part of Fairborn's graduation. Um, it was a great night for everyone, and um, everybody did a great job especially on their speeches, so kudos to all of our students and all of our staff members, and um, thanks to all the teachers for a great year. Um, it was a pretty darn good year for everyone, so thank you. Okay. Okay, I was going to say the same thing, but I thought it was a very good, fun night at graduation. For some reason, I came away feeling really, really good about it, so whatever we did, I loved it. it was great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'll echo that, and definitely, and just welcome to everyone for being here tonight. So good to see all of your faces, and we'll keep it short so that we can move on to the good Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just the year wrapped up, uh, it was fun trying to get to some of the buildings and saying thanks to teachers and staff and those kind of things. And then the only thing, and I'm not going to steal June's thunder, but uh, the new high school is being moved into right now. And it's kind of cool seeing boxes in classrooms and seeing the band you know, setting up the band room and those kind of things. Uh, it's exciting stuff. So with that, we'll go ahead and move on to district presentations. Mr. Lawley? Uh, I'm sorry, recognition of visitors. Mr. President, I didn't have anybody that uh, registered to speak under public comments, um, but we didn't put the sheet out. Is there anybody at this time that wants to talk under public comments and address the board? Hearing none, we can move on. To okay. okay. With that, we'll go to district presentations. Okay, we have a few district presentations tonight. First up is the NIMSI Stars Student Scholarship Awards. And Sarah Fulton, staff member here at Fairborn City Schools, will do the presentation. Hi, welcome. I'd like to uh, introduce all of you guys. Um, NIMSI is a, the National Math and Science Initiative organization that has supported our district for the last three years and we've worked with in years past as well. Uh, Mrs. Trish Hammond here is a Fairborn, Fairborn graduate uh, and is also the program manager for uh, the uh, organization and for us at Fairborn. Um, and she is here to help us present for our three NIMSI Star Student Award winners tonight. Um, so with that, I will uh, go ahead and get started. As a part of our partnership with the National Math and Science Initiative, Fairborn High School has selected three AP STEM students to be recognized for their excellence, leadership, growth, dedication, and engagement in their AP coursework. Over a hundred students taking AP courses at Fairborn High School, and teachers had this to say about these three exceptional students. From Mr. Cordell, about our first award winner, Javon DeWitt. heart belongs to the sciences, Javon has been making incredible strides in AP language and composition this year. His approach to writing has gone from methodic and clinical to rich in its depth and sophistication. He has subsumed the art of rhetoric within his mind. 
Jevin uses his reason and critical thinking abilities well in discussion and application, and he has the mind of an undergraduate as a high school junior. I love to see him push himself each day in class and believe he is a worthy candidate for the STAR Award. Jevin has, Javon has excelled in AP Biology as well, with Mr. Thompson noting that Javon's mock AP scores show an expertise in the material beyond any other student he's worked with in this course. He has also excelled in AP stats, showing the ability to manage an incredibly challenging course load as only a junior. For these reasons, we are proud to award Javon DeWitt with a NIMSI AP Star Student Award $500 scholarship. Come on up. Thank you. 
the checks. Next up, we have a number of students to recognize, and that is the Girls on the Run program here in the Fairborn City Schools. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Girls on the Run inspires participants of all abilities to recognize their individual strengths while building a sense of connection in a, in a team setting. Volunteer coaches facilitate lessons that blend physical activity with life skill development to enable participants to adapt to whatever comes their way. At the end of the season, the team comp completes a 5K together, which provides a tangible sense of accomplishments and, sense, and sets a confident mindset into motion. As the world has changed, the needs of girls and the pressures they face have intensified. Numerous reports have shown that the decline in girls' mental health and physical activity has leveled off over the last decade. Girls on the Run helps to address these mental and physical health concerns. Now more than ever, girls need the skills to build their confidence, develop meaningful relationships, and discover the joy of movement. Evidence shows our program unlocks the power and potential participants need to lead an emotionally and physically healthy life, and so much and so much more than running. Our lessons are research-based and developed and delivered by trained and caring volunteers. Thank you to our coaches Stephanie Goff, Colin Mack, and Zara Ma <coughs> excuse me Madison. Now we will honor our participants and please come to the podium as your name is announced. But there is one thing I would like. I think the coaches Stephanie, you have a little bit more you might want to add here to share with the crowd, correct? Sure. Um, so one of the things, this is a 10-week program that the girls went through, and, and we talked about it helped build their confidence and, and everything else, and team, and anything that throws at them. But they also had a community service project. And we did not tell them what their community service project was. They chose what it was. They came up with probably 30 or 40 different community service projects and narrowed it down to one. And what they ended up actually doing was collecting Fort Bridges of Hope shelter and they collected all types of different items for it, from toiletries to different to canned goods to paper towel, you name it, uh, from that standpoint. I'm so proud of the girls for doing this and giving back to the community that way. So. Thank you. Thank you. Amy? Okay, so I can call your name if you'd come forward to get your certificate. Stephanie Goff. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Mack. And for our students, Ayanna Waitman. She did not do this with us. <laughs> Madison Tedder. Ivy Sutter. Lorelai Alexander, Eden Bailey, Kendall Daly, Sage Madison, Morgan Marlowe, Henley Sortman, Another picture with everybody? Yeah. 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 We want to come up. You're you're missing. Missing. Kate, you're, you're Kate is the pole. Yeah. Get out of there. Get out of there. Yeah, come on. <laughs> we will get you a certificate. I apologize for that. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> No, very carefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
This is gay heart. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mrs. Reynolds had a prior engagement, so she wanted me to send her apologies for not being able to be here tonight to present with us. But this is a year-end review of when we met before school started and, and the decision was made to start Yonder Pouches. We had some data that we presented to the board um, to help make that decision. And this is a year-end review of some of that data and, and, and a look at the Yonder Pouches and, and how it affected us. So again, the Yonder Pouches this year were implemented to allow students to focus on their education without the temptation of screens, while allowing them to keep their cell phones in their possession. Um, the Yonder Pouches, if anybody wasn't here for the presentation before, beginning of the year, it's just a pouch that locks, and um, we had stations set up at Baker Middle School and Fairborn High School for them to lock and unlock the pouches at different locations, wherever they uh, left the facility at. Uh, the benefits... For our schools and students, definitely we talked about reducing the distractions in the classroom. Uh, we wanted students to be more engaged. We thought that was one big reason that uh, it was important that students did not have use of their cell phones. Um, teachers reported that distractions by cell phones dramatically reduced. Um, that was both at Baker Middle School and at the high school. I know Mrs. Reynolds talked and, and said um, that she had a lot of conversations with her teachers and that was a consensus. I know within the first two weeks at uh, Fairborn High School, I had numerous teachers visiting the office saying probably the best start of the school year and they couldn't remember when. Um, and it, it's, it's mainly due to engagement. Um, students, they said, we didn't see this top of their heads anymore. We got to see you know, eye contact and stuff like that. So it was a, it was a really good start to the year and um, you know, a few bumps here and there, but overall it was a really, really good year with the, the cell phone pouches. Reducing at Baker the, uh, the number of lost or stolen phones. Um, so any, any 
phones that were lost, they were recovered um, in the cell phone pouches. So that was nice. And it creates a safer, more focused learning environment. And the discipline data, which we'll look at here just a little bit, significantly reduced in a lot of areas. Um, again, reducing the amount of cell phone related bullying and harassment um, incidents or uh, reports. The data, again, we'll see that on the next slide. Encouraging face-to-face -face interactions with other staff and students. That was one of the big things, especially since COVID, that social interaction lacked um, in our schools. And I will say, you know, I won't read it to you at the very end, you know, just kind of our uh, consensus overall. But that was the one thing um, that was reported to me at the high school was our commons, which is where we eat lunch at, was much, much louder. And... It doesn't seem like a good thing, but it was a wonderful thing because students were interacting with each other, and that's one thing that we try to teach our students, especially at Baker, you know, as to how to how to have those social interactions the correct way. Um, de decreasing cheating, plagiarism, um, again to enhance the learning opportunities. So last year, or I'm sorry, at the beginning of this year, we reported that last year both Baker and um, Fairborn High School reported. 100% of any of our bullying and harassment cases that we investigated somehow, some way involved a cell phone, social media, all at some point taking place during the school day as well. Um, this year at Baker, there were zero cases that involved cell phones. At the high school, 37.5% of the cases, so three out of the eight that we investigated did involve cell phones, and you'll see the data later you know, th those things were addressed in our discipline. So it's a significant increase from 100%, you know, down to zero at, at Baker and 37% for us. Um, last year, there were 1,500 referrals for um, Baker Middle School at the office involving 275 students. This year, 275 office referrals involving 150 students. So there was an 82% reduction all together at, at Baker Middle School. Um, and then at the high school, how these referrals are submitted la the, in the 22-23 school year, they were submitted with un under different classifications. So we didn't have a clear, you know, misuse of technology versus, you know, inappropriate use of it. So we had over 500 reported issues for um, misuse of, of technology. And that was solely directed at the, uh, for cell phone usage. Now, that number is a little underestimated because, again, how we coded it in 22-23, the one thing that we wanted to make sure of is we were consistent in how we were coding it this year so that we could start tracking some true data. Um, this year we had 602 total reported referrals. They were all managed by the office by 312 students. So that was an average of, of two issues per student which is significantly lower than what we have noticed in the past. So the consequences that we came up with, um, first time the student were to, they were to bring the phone to the office and the parent had to come pick it up, kind of a warning is the, is the best way to describe it, especially with this new process. But the parent still had to come in and, and pick the phone up, so the student lost their phone. Um, the second time the student had to bring their phone to the office and the parent comes to pick it up and they had one day of in-school intervention. And then the third time and beyond, the student brings the phone to the office, parent picks it up, and there was an out-of-school suspension assigned. So that was the consequences that we had decided for uh, the policy for the uh, Yonder Pouches. This, uh, this year, parent pickups, Baker, there were 184. At our school, 348. Um, In-school interventions, 47 and 67 for us, and total suspensions, 40 for Baker, 71 for us. That's just for cell phones. Um, other discipline data, this was significant, and you could actually feel it in the school. You know, we had teachers say you could, you know, when, when you're walking the hallways, you can just kind of, you, you get this feel that the kids are on edge sometimes. Um, the fighting, the, the physical violence reduced uh, overall from, from last year to this year. Uh, skipping class for Baker and the high school reduced. We did have tardies to class for us at the high school. That's different, um, you know, if you're, we changed our policy on that. Um, we went, in order to um, have that as an office referral, 
you know, we gave them we give them four minutes to change classes. If they were within a minute, you know, with a pass, uh, or with a pass, they were okay. But there was a little bit of a grace period in the past that we did not allow this year. Um, so that's what raised the number there. Um, students vaping, those numbers decreased. We had a, we saw a lot of students um, in school in 22-23 texting one another to try to meet up in places. Um, so we felt like that that was a, a, a pretty helpful use of the yonder pouches and them not being able to communicate with one another. And then the vandalisms in the school went down. Um, suicide screenings, when we reported at the beginning of the year, last school year, Baker had 89, we had 75. This year, Baker had 70. Ours went up. Ours, when we um, investigated them, they were all light speed alerts, and they were all from the Chromebook, so nothing from the cell phones. So that was pretty significant, too. Um, not to say that all 75 were from Chromebooks the previous year, but that was what we tracked this year. And then again, the overall effects, um, effects Baker said that the cell phone-related uh, decimal categories were reduced um, after the implementation of the Yonder pouches. And then uh, the staff and students reported feeling less distractions. The funny part about all this is just the anecdotal data, talking to the students, asking them how they felt, and you would be surprised. You know, it surprised us when we asked them, how do you feel about not having your cell phones? More students than not would, would tell us that it was nice. So I think they felt that um, not having their cell phones on them allowed them to participate in the school setting uh, more often and, and be engaged in their learning. So that was a, a, a very nice... That, that was very nice feedback from the students. So uh, on behalf of Baker Middle School and, and Mrs. Reynolds, you know, I, I would like to say thank you so much for allowing us to do this. It was an incredible um, opportunity for us to try to get the students engaged back in the learning environment. And it, it was very successful. So we would like to say thank you to the board for letting us, um, allowing us to do that this year. So thank you. That's, that's awesome. That's thank you. I thank you. Quick comment from yes, the sir. teachers and different people in the buildings that I talked to. All of them said the whole environment was magnitudes better this year than it was last year. Yeah. Which which is interesting. And Governor DeWine in the past two weeks has now passed yeah. resolution that yeah. we will all districts are now mandated to have some sort of uh, policy regarding cell phone use. So yeah, and I, we're ahead of the curve and that's impressive. Course. Definitely. And and I will say that seven Different high schools reached out, came to Fairborn throughout the school year to see our process, ask what our policy is on discipline for um, the cell phone pouches. And from what I know, five of the seven are implementing the Yonder pouches next year. Do you feel like you have anything that you would like to modify or update yes. about it? Yes. Yeah, there were some processes and procedures that we didn't have in place that we, you know, looking back on it, um, we talked about it as, a, as an administrative staff that will definitely change to start the school year next year. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. So good job. Thank you guys thank, so thank much. You yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Thank you. Next district presentation uh, is the recognition of the OIA subregion and the uh, enlisted instructor of the year. And we have two gentlemen here tonight, uh, and they are our high school. Uh, ROTC instructors. And before I get into the recognition, I would just like to say these two gentlemen that are here tonight turned a program around uh, at our high school in the last couple of years, turned it around very quickly. And I can say with confidence, board members, that uh, our ROTC program here at the high school is one of the tops in the state of Ohio. And uh, Chief Master Sergeant Boosley and Major Smith. Uh, I just want to say um, you guys are outstanding staff members, instructors for our kids, outstanding citizens here in the community, and thank you for your service to our country and uh, two great Americans sitting right among us. Bear with me, this, this right up here, the lettering is a little small, so bear <laughs> <laughs> with me, okay? All right. Tell you a little bit about the recognition of uh, Chief Master Sergeant Usley. The Fairborn City School District congratulates Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Usley from the Air Force Junior ROTC Unit, Ohio 031. 
Fairborn High School for being selected by Headquarters Air Force Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps as the Enlisted Outstanding Instructor Award winner for Subregion 3.6. Chief Master Sergeant Oosley was nominated for the award by Senior Aerospace Science Instructor Major Matthew Smith. Under the leadership of Chief Master Sergeant Oosley, the Fairborn High School ROTC program is increasing in participation and leadership opportunities for cadets. Major Smith states, Chief Oosley is a true leader who inspires cadets to participate in leadership development requirements and community service and advocates for new opportunities for the program. Chief Master Sergeant Oosley efforts have increased interest in the ROTC program and STEM at Fairborn High School. Under Chief Oosley's leadership, the FHS Junior ROTC program has done the following procured five adventure drone kits through the headquarters of Air Force Junior ROTC, introducing STEM to cadets, improving participation in after school and club activities, valued at more than $8,000. We've acquired archery equipment through headquarters Air Force Junior ROTC, valued at more than $3,000, and promoting growth and excitement for the program, and that's based on cadet feedback facilitated a $10,000 flight simulator purchase for the FHS Air Force ROTC program with district leadership, enhancing the aerospace science curriculum for over 60 cadets. Utilizing the adventure drone kits introduced to Fairborn High School Junior ROTC Drone Club after school activity, supervising 60 plus flight hours. Academically, Chief Master Sergeant Oosley advocates for students, cultivating rapport with high school gym staff, working with scheduling challenges to ensure the ROTC access to weight room and gymnasium, taught 20 hours of STEM material and cadet rockety program, organized across five academic periods, and built and launched 56 rockets. They planned for the 2024 U.S. Air Force Museum CIA trip for 42 students and enriched 200 plus hour aeronautical research project with combat aircraft tour. Chief Master Sergeant Oosley works with cadets to ensure they are prepared for upcoming events, improving professionalism with students and the program. He has bolstered unit growth by retaining positive and capable cadets enhancing program perception, and impacting recruiting. He coached 13 cadets to the top third 619 finish at the Wayne High School Raider competition and finished with two third place event finishes. Chief Oosley coordinated with Air Force Junior ROT partners at Bellbrook High School to plan and execute the 14.4 mile baton memorial march honoring the sacrifices of World War II service members. And if I can just add here, my father was part of that in the Pacific. Also, 30 high school cadets finished the march, 100% completion rate. In the community, Chief Master Sergeant Oosley conducted two recruiting events at Baker Middle School, garnering a 72% increase in projected enrollment for next year improving the viability of the program. He organized support for more than 40 community and school events, increasing the visibility and professionalism of the FHS Junior ROTC program. He partnered with the 88th Air Base Wing Honor Guard for the Cadet Drill Cadre, enhancing the skill set and professionalism of the Junior ROTC Color Guard, ultimately improving the competitiveness, competitiveness at local drill meets. He coordinated the veteran service organizations to recognize veteran sacrifices and patriarchal holidays to increase a spirit decor. Finally, Chief, o o uh, I'm sorry, Chief Oosley partnered with community leaders and the ROTC units to provide cadets with air camp STEM opportunities, helping 40 cadets from the units to receive full scholarship. Is there anything you have not done? <laughs> with that, I'd like to recognize Chief Master Sergeant Oosley with his certificate. Again, congratulations.
I say something real quick? Yes. Please. Okay. Um, I was kind of hoping I was going to get one of those big checks, but um, <laughs> you guys have my mailing address. You can just mail it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but for those of you that don't know, our ROTC program is a team sport. Um, for one, I have a great teammate and Matt Smith, and you guys know him. Um, I wouldn't be here if not for him. He's the one that talked me into taking this job. I had multiple job offers. Um, and I'll just say Fairborn was not on the top of the list. But after I got off the phone with Matt almost two years ago, um, he, he, he's a used car salesman. <laughs> That's his future right there. Um, but the support, that for everything that, that Gene read, it's got his fingerprints all over it too. So this is not, this is not a me award. Um, we also have great teamwork and great support at the school from our fellow teachers to our counselors. To our school leadership, I see Waylon hiding back there, um, all the way up to the district and this board. You guys took a chance on us. I know two years ago you guys could have easily pulled the plug on this program. Matt and I say every day that the Air Force was probably a week, if not two weeks, from pulling the plug on Fairborn High School. Um, but you guys took a chance on us and gave us an opportunity. We get to see that the changes in our cadets' lives every day. Um, some of you guys might not get that, but it's amazing. And so we're excited. Um, this is just, I really appreciate this, but again, this is a team effort. This is just not me. So thank you very much. So. Thank you. Oh, no. You're not going to get away without a picture. Thank you very much. Everything. Go on. Mr. Okay. I'm short. <laughs> really? Okay, our final presentation tonight is a facility update and where we're at. Uh, just first off, uh, Phase 3B at the primary has started and it's well underway. Um, it's been a long time coming for that. And that is all going to be ready when school starts in August. And um, a lot of equipment up there moving this week and uh, getting that where it is supposed to be. So uh, ball rolling is uh, ball is going on that and rolling. Um, high school, um, as you know, as mentioned, uh, they're currently moving out of the current high school into the new high school. That all started on Monday. Um, and they are moving very quickly. We have a lot of high school students that we hired that's helping do that. One of the trucks, honest to gosh, one truck was unloaded, they told me, in nine minutes by the high school kids. Unloaded. So, uh, and me, I'd still be unloaded. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, a lot of great help. Um, the track at the stadium is going in, that final coat. Uh, I know yesterday we were about half done, and today I think, uh, looking at it from a distance, I think they were about three quarters finished as far as putting that final coat on. Then they'll come and the next step, I think, is to paint it or coat it yeah. Columbia Blue. So that once they get that finished, uh, that's another step, positive step. Uh, they are laying concrete along the tennis courts. Uh, they are doing more work to finalize the tennis courts, get those ready. Uh, the training facility is uh, undercover and windows should be going in any day. Um, a lot of cleaning to do inside uh, the arena. They are getting ready to paint the floor and they've been staining and all that, whatever they do there. And if you go in there, it is extremely cool in that arena. You can hang meat in there. Uh, it's because they have to keep the humidity down with staining of that floor and that. But uh, a lot going on over there. The auditorium, uh, let me say the Performing Arts Center, um, that place is going to be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, wait till you see what that stage is going to look like when they are all finished. Um, you're talking major league um, concerts in there as far if you went to uh, what's the uh, Schuster and you go to concerts there and you see all those brown panels and that wood look. Um, that's what's going in right now at the uh, Performing Arts Center. That is going to be something, and how that all operates. It's really technical, but it's it's so cool. I could go on and on and on, but uh, 
uh, we're making great progress. Yeah. They're packing up, Gretchen and the crew over there at the middle school is packing up a lot of things. Uh, they, will, they will be moving out of that building into the current high school June the 17th. So what, less than two weeks away, we're at June the 6th. And um, um, it's happening. A little bit more about the middle school. Yesterday, we had a visioning meeting here with the architects, Garmin, Miller, and Richie, Richley. And um, uh, it was a team of teachers, administrators, and some board members uh, start visioning process for the middle school. Uh, like I said, that was our first meeting. Our second meeting will be July 30th at 1 o'clock. Uh, it'll probably be in one of the buildings. It won't, I don't think it'll be here, but we had it here yesterday. That's July 30th at 1 o'clock, and then the final visioning meeting will be September the 17th, and that'll probably be 6 in the evening. That'll TBA I'll announce that time as we get close, excuse me, closer to that. So, you know, we finished this high, we're finishing this high school, and then we're in the next phase of uh, some great happenings here in, in the Fairborn City Schools. So, a lot of great input, a lot of great teamwork, and it is coming to fruition. We're going to get there. And we're going to build an outstanding middle school guy for our students. Just one other yep. comment to that was he mentioned Garmin Miller as the architect for the middle school. Peterson was selected as the yep. construction company, CMR, for the middle school. They're the same company that did the high school. And they did an excellent job at the high school. So that was good news. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, budget and finance. Uh, there's some recommendations. If we could get a uh, motion and a second, then uh, we can talk about them. Second. Second. Okay. So I just wanted to mention number two on here, if people haven't noticed, is the recommendation from the superintendent treasurer to eliminate pay to participate in the Fairmore School District, which to me is outstanding. Uh, to not have those participation fees uh, going forward. That, that's good for our students and good for our families. Uh, then the rest of this is really the monthly financial report and surplusing some buses and uh, some stuff. That was out, is that out of the print room? It looks like print type stuff. Yeah. So. Mr. Brennan, if I could just Go ahead. Add, uh, add on to your comment about uh, doing away with pay to participate. Uh, that's always been a goal of mine. Next year, Fairborn City Schools will be at 100% free and reduced lunches. So I think the timing is perfect, and uh, it's another way to get more kids involved, hopefully, in, in our all right. of our programs. Yeah. That's, right. That's awesome. Okay. Mr. Pyle? Ms. Landon? Yes. Mrs. Webb? Yes. Mrs. Milan? Yes. Mr. Steininger? Yay. Mr. Browning? Yes. Motion carries. Next is administrative reports and superintendent recommendations. This goes all the way to the bottom of page 14. Uh, if we could get a motion and a second, then we'll go over a few items. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about the financial stuff? So in terms of, at the, uh, on page 14, you have uh, three change orders. Three change order 162. Uh, negative 75,000. You have number eight, change order 163, a return of 109,000. And uh, change order 164 is a return of $214,000. So we're pleased as some of this wraps up, as some of the contingency can be returned, some of the basically things you hold money in advance for have been resolved. And so we're uh, very pleased that. Uh, Money is going back in the project. Ultimately, then, money we save on the high school, such as this, means that since we did a combination, there's more money that we could use at the middle school. Right. If I did the math right, did it's about four hundred thousand total. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that came back, which yeah. is awesome. Really, really nice. Okay, you want to talk some? Of personnel one? Yes, if, uh, before you vote. Uh, we have here tonight, we have our new uh, business manager that will uh, officially be with us August the 1st, Rodney Roberts, sitting there in the back. And Rodney uh, is a former business manager at Franklin City Schools. He was involved when the that 
high school, new high school at Franklin started going up. He was a guy working with the OSSC as part of that project. And then he comes to us right now currently from the Kettering City Schools. Usually it's the opposite way around. We lose to Kettering, but we snagged Mr. Roberts up and, uh, from Kettering, and uh, we're glad to have you aboard. Uh, the other personnel item that you will approve here shortly, and that we have our new high school principal, uh, that will succeed Wayland Stegall. Karen Cicchetti comes to us from Dayton Public Schools, currently the principal at Dayton Belmont High School. A vast amount of experience, I think the last eight years at Dayton Belmont, and prior to that, uh, Reading Schools in Cincinnati, or no, Lachlan Schools in Cincinnati. So welcome to both of you. We're excited to have you. I guess the only other comment I was going to make was it's nice to see the graduating class in here. So oh, yeah. part of the reason why yeah, this is so many pages yeah. is it's the actual approval of the graduating class. Uh, it's like from page 10 to page 14 or something yeah. like that. So it's kind of neat to, to get to finally approve that. So anything else? Any other comments? Okay. Mr. Pilot? Mrs. Millard? Yes. Ms. Landon? Yes. Mrs. Webb? Yes. Mr. Steininger? Yay. Mr. Browning? Yes. Motion carries. Next is gifts and donations. Katie? The Fairborn City Schools Board of Education would like to gratefully acknowledge the following gifts and donations. Abiding Christ Lutheran Church, $922.16 for our homeless fund. Sue and Chuck Brockenhoff, $500 for the Jennifer Wyden Literacy Project. Fairborn Park Hills High School Viking Queens, $500 for the Jennifer Whited Literacy Project. Thank you so much for your generous donations. We always appreciate your service to our, um, our school district. Okay. Next is executive session. I'm going to entertain a motion to go into executive session for the specified purpose of the compensation of public employees. So, <laughs> so it's, it's okay. Yes. Motion carries. We anticipate the executive session.